We are now entering debate time, and that is one debate on the lot. And I invite anyone to kick off, please. So you put your hand up to debate there. Don't all speak at once. You don't have to debate. Yeah, you just don't have to. Councillor Coco. Ding, ding. Right. Um, I just want to speak to a few um, of my amendments. Um, first one is about um, South Library, the temporary um, facility. Um, that is something that the community board, and I'll remind the councillors involved that the community board supports us, and that has become come from feedback that came from our community. So we had quite a lot of consultation, obviously, over what the current build will look like. And through that process, it was very clear that the local community wants somewhere that's local that they can go to for their library. There's a lot of kids that walk there uh, after school. Uh, walking to Spraden Library, uh, one, would take a long time, and two, would not have the capacity <laughs> for those children. Uh, and uh, the same with Hillswall or Tauranga. So um, it, it's... Uh, it's very important um, for the community, but they'll have their say if this does not pass um, today. Second one, um, I've got a resolution in there about the carbon emission climate cost of the projects uh, that we have. I'd like to, um, over time, uh, we have the goal as a council to um, not only look at what the actual value cost in dollars is of a project that we're doing, as well as operational costs, mm -hmm. But also, what is the cost of that on our climate? What are the emissions that are involved? At the moment, we can't, uh, using rational um, considerations, really um, consider what the, the cost of those things are. We have to sort of make judgments, but we don't know the full information. So um, I'm pleased that we've sort of worked on some wording there that will start progressing that um, further and get some more information back. Um, so. Um, hopefully everyone will support that. And then the last comment is around, um, well, actually I've got another two. So there's the street trees. Um, I'm getting, we, our board again um, would like to see some more trees in streets. It's quite simple, but it's not simple obviously to work out like where they can go. Um, and it's not known what the budgets are for this. Um, so it's taken a lot of um, rewording to get something um, in there, but I think we're moving that to a later point. But yeah, and then the other one was about biodiversity. Um, I've got a lot of um, amendments around um, reducing peace, including funding to go to volunteer organisations who do a huge amount of work in this area. Um, we have obviously a lot of um, special native species um, around Otatahi, and uh, we need the funding there to um, make sure that we're getting rid of the pests and that includes predators but also plant pests that people don't normally think of um, that are very important because they can out compete and dislodge native um, species and, um, and, and that our um, native birds and insects thrive on. So um, I'd like um, to see that supported and um, there'll be submissions I'm sure during the process on these as well. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Scandrick please. Yeah, um, thank you. Um, I've made a decision um, some time ago, and I made it very clear that I wouldn't be supporting any in increases to the um, long-term plan. The key for me is going out to the communities and finding out exactly what they want. And we will never get the perfect because we are, as humans, in different parts and different areas of life as we go through. And um, so those requirements are very different for each of us in our communities. But the two things I'll comment on, um, one is the, um, the maintenance of community facilities. These community facilities have a lifestyle, not just with regards to um, uh, the um, quality of build and its maintenance, but also the community's needs around them. We've seen a number of our um, community facilities, Centennial Hall, um, for instance, being demolished, and that land 
being used for housing, which was a far better need because the community has said to us that they were not really interested in that building. We've heard on Domain Terrace, a community facility taken over by a community group and many other community groups around that take take um, a, a lead from that main community group. So there are different things in our communities for different uh, facilities. So they have their own life but it's key that the communities let us know that through the community board and the councils listen to it. So it's not all doom and gloom. There are just different changes in our society. Uh, with regards to the South Library, the temporary um, running of the South Library, there are some real um, opportunities here to increase the knowledge of Sprayden Library, for instance, in a key activity area next to um, Barrington Park and the playground, an excellent playground there. There are some real positives with regards to getting out and running our community boards in communities where we have never done that before. But again, we, will, we must ensure that our local staff have the full support that they would require to, to get there, because I believe that our local staff are really stretched and are continued to uh, be given work um, which they really need support on. So those two things, I think, we'll, we, we've got some opportunities there. But as I said, I want to hear from our communities and our rate pars about what really is important to them. Because if we look at our long-term plan, without any amendments, in 10 years, to the average household, there will be over $2,000 increase per annum on their rates if there are no amendments and no changes in the annual plan excuse me, annual plans. So um, I'll be voting no to these. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Henstock, please. Uh, thank you. We're staring down the barrel of an already unsustainable rate rise here. And uh, quite frankly, I find it astonishing that uh, we're continuing to pile on amendments that just continue to push up the cost and add to the, uh, to the burden on our rate payers already. I won't be supporting uh, non-essential works um, and some of the amendments, um, I simply don't have enough information to understand the financial implications, and I think it's irresponsible to progress. And some of the other ones, it's, uh, we're clear that the staff comment is overwhelmingly against it, and in some of them we've got staff saying it's within current levels of service, it's already covered off somewhere within a budget, funding's available, and for the most part I'm happy to accept the staff advice in that respect. There's a couple I wish to touch on uh, specifically. Uh, the first is number 53, and that's the development of a community facility in Marshlands and Prestons. These are new suburbs post-earthquakes, and there's very little in the way of community facilities. Uh, I do note that that's in years uh, 33 and 34 at the very end of the long-term plan, so I applaud uh, fellow Councillor Barber for his uh, taking this responsible approach and pushing that out. Um, in relation to number 54 with the temporary facilities for the South Library, thank you to staff who have turned up today. I won't be supporting that. Um, I do think there's adequate provision of services elsewhere, um, and staff have said to us today that it is not a feasible economic option. I think that's a quote. Uh, the approach recommended by staff is, is consistent with uh, other rebuild projects. In respect of number 86, which is the urban forest plan, uh, again, not enough information to inform a decision, so um, it's appropriate for a report. Thank you for changing that. Uh, to um, be in the report status. Uh, but yeah, the final one is uh, Amendment Number 57 in respect of facilities. There's been a lot of conversation around that, uh, and I'll be supporting the amendment proposed by Councillor Templeton, which picks up the alternative which was suggested by staff. Uh, staff have very clearly told us today that this will contribute to preserving the life of the assets, and it requires a relatively small increase. And to quote uh, staff's words, it will make a difference. So I think that is money well spent. I, I, I want to finish by saying that the rates burden is really real for our residents. We really don't have a lot of room to move. We're expecting our residents to make some really tough decisions uh, and for them to make some sacrifices with their household budgets. So quite frankly, we have to do the same. Uh, I'm keen to hear from the public on what really matters to them. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Moore, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yeah, there'll be a number of these I won't be supporting and in increasing extra budgets. Uh, the financial situation is not great. The exception, however, would be around strength in communities. I really do believe that provides uh, very good value and it does need to be infla inflation adjusted. Um, some I will be supporting 
that I'd like to commend. Uh, number 10 on sport fields being funded through development contributions from County Hampton. I think that is an excellent use of development contributions if it can be done. Um, I think that is an excellent amendment and suggestion. Uh, just Councillor Coker's on playgrounds number 35. Uh, there, there is a current uh, plan from Council which is reducing the amount of playgrounds um, and Hallsall recently was sort of the guinea pig, if you will, on doing this. What it means is turning play equipment at four playgrounds into play equipment at two playgrounds. It didn't involve making the two with equipment bigger. It involved making them essentially like for like and removing equipment from the other two. And playgrounds are something that is able to be used by everyone regardless of financial means. Uh, they are very, very popular with the families that use them. And when you go and remove equipment, it doesn't go down very well. Um, I've had an email from a disgruntled three-year-old before, and the question was, when are you going to put the swings back? It wasn't, will you? It was, when? Uh, and where will you build us another playground? Not will you, but where? Um, and then I've also had someone contact me, and she said, look, I'm in a Christchurch Facebook group with 10,000 mums. And it's got me thinking, if we're going to go reduce the amount of playgrounds, uh, we've got many, many tens of thousands of mums uh, to be reckoned with. Um, that's not going to go down well either. Um, so if this starts getting rolled out in your wards, um, your community will absolutely uh, not be very happy with you if playgrounds are getting reduced. Uh, so I commend Councillor Coker on that. Um, I would like to commend Councillor Barber or, or a community facility. Partnership with local community works really, really, really well. And preparing for growth is very, very important. Um, very nice work. Councillor Harrison Hunt, 58, kids being able to walk to school safely, that is very, very important um, and something I feel passionately about. Um, a slightly more unusual one that was put forward by myself, number 75, tennis courts at Napunawai. There's 12 beautiful tennis courts there. They don't get used very often. Um, I hope they will in due course if they can provide wind shelter around the area. But what this is banking on uh, is $7,000 annually from public use. What that means is 1.7, on average, users per day of 12 beautiful tennis courts, um, which would suggest they would be severely underutilised. That's not consistent um, with our vision and priorities to get more people into sport, not get more people out of sport. So maybe pay for use will be more appropriate in years to come, but I, I want to meet with Tennis Canterbury to find out more before that is in a final plan. Thank you. Brilliant timing. Um, Councillor Fields. Oh, straight up. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I'll be talking about toilets today, and um, anybody who follows me on um, Facebook, Tyrone Fields Councillor for Banks Peninsula, it's my handle, uh, will know I'm very enthusiastic about the toilets around Banks Peninsula. Um, today I want to talk about Wainui and Devotials very quickly. Um, so Wainui is a beautiful community, great location, and it's a treasure, um, uh, one of the treasures of the, of the peninsula, um, right next to French Farm and Tikal Bay, and they'll form a substantial part of our offering as a as destination banks peninsula, I think, in the future. Wainui is a, a focal point also of our burgeoning local salmon farming industry, creating lot jobs and showcasing world-class produce um, that clever people in our region deliver. Uh, but Wainui, unfortunately, has toilets that are reminiscent of the trash compactor on the Death, Death Star. <laughs> French farm is not much better, but uh, one thing at a time. Uh, our community board uh, got a deputation from residents about a year ago, and we promised to zhush up the Wainui toilets, and to be fair, some work has been done, so now it's reminiscent of the trash compactor on the Death Star with a paint job. They're dark, dingy, they smell, they're broken. And a replacement just needs to be pushed up the list as a priority. That's why I'm raising it, that's why I'm asking you to support that. Um, Devotials, very small impact, but huge bang for your buck in the back backyard playground. Well, Mr Mayor, you will know what a beautiful part of the world that is. Um, magnificent location, magnificent camping ground, some great showgrounds uh, with excellent public toilets, but they're just too far away. Um, to be a world-class destination, we have to have at least regional class facilities. But right now, as per the amendment, I'd be happy with a couple of portaloos in the summer while we figure out what the best thing to do is. Um, I also want to support Councillor Coker's amendments on sustainability and pest control. I know that on Banks Peninsula, our approach to the impacts of climate change is the number one, number one by a mile um, issue, by, yeah, by a country mile. Uh, and for every dollar we spend, the economic benefit is well multiplied. And so much gets done far beyond the funding of this council, but we have to do our bit. And thank you, Mel, for, for putting those in. I appreciate that. So that's uh, 
It's me. Kia ora. Tēnā katoa. As everybody can see, there's a couple of really big amendments in here for um, for Rikudin. And when we're talking about uh, Rikudin, I think about diversity, I think about localism, I think about diversity of thought, diversity of people, and diversity of culture. And a couple of fun facts about Rikudin is we are the second busiest hub in the city outside of the CBD. People use us and then go back to their nice suburban homes. It is very, very busy. But little do they know that there are industrialists and innovators in the Mandible catchment. There's connected and engaged communities in, in the Kilmarnock area around Dean's Bush. There's growing and educated people in Islam, which includes students and residents, and the colourful and vibrant communities in the Upper Rickerton area, such as Church Corner and Sockburn. Now, we have long-term residents that are around Sockburn, and in my opinion, that area has been neglected for many years. I remember in my day paying $1.50 to go do some manus at the Sockburn pool, and I think everybody remembers that, and we miss that so, so much. My childhood was at Sockburn. Now, we see, as you go through Rickerton, the diverse and contrasting communities, even just within my ward itself. And when we're talking about localism, we're talking about things that make the neighbourhood special. Now, I look at things on a spectrum basis. For example, there is ward issues, such as PC14, and many other things of the sort. And then there becomes uh, catchment issues, which is the island catchment, who have issues with waste management, Sockburn, who have issues with even just infrastructure, and then you've got Central Rickerton, who have lack of parking, lack of things to do and things to, things to see. So when we're looking at this, I'm looking at this from a localism perspective. And it's really important that all of these amendments that you see before you today uh, are addressing these things. And within the Rickerton Collective, which is a collective of close to 100 organisations who actually all gave us their thoughts of more than 100 ideas and initiatives, I was able to take all of those on board. So please... I am, I am promising you that I'm taking this community on board with me, driven by the champions who push the communities in their neighbourhoods. Now, lastly, I'm very happy to support uh, Councillor Coker's uh, amendments, particularly around climate change. And climate change is the number one issue that the city faces, yet uh, the rates impacts are actually quite low in comparison to what she's putting forward. So I'm quite happy to support that. Councillor Moore's amendments too. Now, I will be withdrawing... Uh, number 58, on the basis of actually having a good yarn to Lynette uh, and the traffic team and the transport team. Reason being is because we are going to be working at a localism level to make sure that we continue to do those minor traffic improvements. So, therefore, I thank everyone for listening to this, listening to this yarn. I really hope you do support the Pocket Park, support the developing of, of Sockburn, which has been very well needed and continue to support our communities in Rikina. Norera, tēnā koutou Thank you. Thank you. Um, basically, I want to speak to my amendment there around Branston Park and the need for that. I'm really pleased to see that staff have said they can find that with an existing project um, budget, so there's no impact on rates. That's fantastic. Um, so to be able to ring fence that in some way to give the community a um, upgrade to that facility on that park would be truly appreciated if people could support that. Um, the facilities in that 1960s changing shed with its plumbing and toilets is third world to hear the um, descriptions there of Banks Peninsula kind of hits home rather well, let alone the fact that this is a park in Hornby that doesn't have any public facilities to um, be toileting in. So you've got plenty of opportunity in the likes of Warren Park and Denton Park, but you've got this one in the middle, Branston, which has absolutely no public facility whatsoever. So what happens during rugby league games and, and other activities on that park? People f have, find they need to relieve themselves in rather inappropriate places. So I, I would like to um, commend Andrew and his team for highlighting that we need more you know, gender inclusive toileting and so forth but even some toileting in there for public would be absolutely needed in the fact that when you go to a public park and the nearest is over a kilometre away you've got a hell of a dash to try and get there so please support that. Um, I'm, I'm with 
um, Councillor Henstock over there, and I'm, I'm struggling to, to look at the idea of increasing rates on our ratepayers at the moment. We're all hurting really badly, and when you talk to the public out there and say 15% is being proposed, they just about l l jump out of their skins. So we've got to find every way we can to not be putting it up and to economise finding it within existing budgets and those sorts of things to try and not accentuate and make it worse for our, our um, public. I would really looking forward to the consultation going out. Um, we need to hear from our people and understand what you know, they feel we need to be doing and, and don't need to be doing. And looking forward to, to later in this process when we actually you know, go through the hearings and we hear directly from them in the chamber here. And then also to our deliberations to, to land the final plan when we get to that point to see, you know, hopefully we can get down to something realistic. I mean, for me, a single figure, single digit increase is what I'd be aiming for. So let's work together and, and put some hard mahi through this consultation and deliberation process and see if we can't help the ratepayers in our city, who include us, to um, have a livable increase rather than something that's um, rather scary at the moment. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor Phil. <clears throat> Good that you saw the light. Um, <clears throat> as a first timer in this LTP process, um, I have to say I was really surprised by the number of amendments um, and going through them, looking at the depth and breadth of thought uh, by my colleagues about things that they're really passionate about. Um, I must admit I've, I've got a new respect for uh, for some of you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> So, yeah, I, pre I mean, I appreciate the, uh, the zeal that you have for your communities. It's been uh, really good to see. Um, but in the short term, I really don't want to burden the ratepayers uh, with, with anything more than they're burdened with. As I've banged on about before, I'm concerned about council debt uh, via either CCHL or council itself. Uh, I'm concerned, and, this, and I hear a lot about the increase, increases in rates year on year from residents. Um, uh, that's what they're concerned about. And, and so I've, I've sort of, I won't support a lot of the extra spending in the next couple of years. Uh, I feel like we need to get over the hump. Uh, and I took these considerations into my own uh, amendment, which is number 53. And I would hope that you would support this. This is for um, uh, a marshland community centre. Uh, it's a community board priority. Um, there's a gap in the network plan out in this particular area. Um, and like I've said before, nine years ago, there was nothing out there. And now there's well over 2,000 sections and more going in all the time. Um, this is an interesting community. It's eclectic. It comes from all over the wider Burwood Ward uh, where we lost school halls and church halls and, uh, and a lot of uh, council um, infrastructure. Um, a lot of these people are earthquake refugees. I know because they live around me and I saw them uh, over where I used to live near the red zone. Um, there's a motivated uh, trust operating in the area with a bit of skin in the game. They've got a million dollars. Um, I would rather we did this a lot sooner, but I've pushed it right out to the very end of the long-term plan um, to be cognizant of the situation that we're in now and will be for the next couple of years. Um, yeah, so this community centre has wide, the widespread support of the community out there. A lot of people want to be uh, activated in the areas where they live. Currently, the people of the Martians area travel everywhere to get to what they need. Um, we've only just got shops in the supermarket, etc. Uh, so this will be a great centre to the community when it's built. Um, yeah, I've really appreciated and enjoyed this process and um, yeah, and hope you'll support particularly my amendment number 53. Thanks. Thank you. I have been a surprise to do this every year. I don't have any additions uh, to the rate increase this year. I think at the moment it's far too high for the people of Christchurch. Um, you know, my goal is really to get it uh, into a single digit uh, number and I think we should be focusing on that as we work through it. We'll obviously have a decent debate next week around the sort of parameters of it. Um, but the only thing I wanted to note was that uh, it will be difficult to support a lot of these where we're increasing costs. Um, but at the same time, just employ everyone. I, and I get where people are coming from with their wards, but to really take a citywide view. Um, so let's not get um, territorial over our patches. I've put none in from my ward. 
I've taken the what's best for city approach, and I think if everyone can do that, um, actually will be better to, to get to this point. So uh, my preference is that we don't uh, literally sit here on the live stream lobbying for our wards, but we take that best for city approach, and I hope we can do that the infrastructure one this afternoon, and the final one for the day, which will be the rating for renewals, which has the potential to bring the rates down by nearly 2% before we go out to the public. Um, but I think there are still big challenges to get to, and, and this race is certainly not over. Um, it's, it's really only just beginning. Thank you, um, Councillor Cotter, please. Yeah, thank you. And yes, look on the rates increase. Nobody wants, none of us want to see an increase the size that we have, and I know we will still be continuing to work on bringing it down. But best for city is um, one of our uh, mantras is let's look after what we have, which is why we all have to support the um, community facilities amendment because we can't let them run down. We need to keep this city going. And so if it, if it does require a, a little bit more increase, sort of, it might be a 0 0.01, a 0 0.02. These are small amounts that we can try and recoup between now and June, and also in response to our submitters who come in and tell us what their priorities are. We have to be leaders here. We represent our communities, not just our ward, but we're, we're the ears to the city. So when people come to us and say, this is important to me, we need to make it happen prudently and pragmatically, not wildly and willy-nilly. So um, I think we're being prudent and pragmatic today, and these amendments, I don't have any problem with many of them, there's a couple, but and a lot of them have zero rate impact anyway. So um, also the community parks, I'm pretty passionate about them. I think we need them more than ever with all the intensification going on in our suburbs. We need green spaces. We need them for our mental health and we need them for the physical health of our city. We need to look after the city and keep it going. We need to afford to pay for what we are doing. So we need to concentrate on not just what we're paying for our rates, but what we're getting for them. We need to give our people good value for what they're spending, and we need to deliver efficiently and responsibly. But we need to keep delivering. So I'll be supporting most of this today. Councillor Goff, please. Thanks. Uh, look, there's a, a handful of amendments that I'm supporting, um, and most of those centre around reducing expenditure. I've recorded these with the Secretariat, so I'm not going to run them through um, through all of them now. But I think at a broad level, I just want to reiterate what some others have said, um, and that's you know the elephant in the room being that we're staring down the barrel of a 15% rate rise. And this is absolutely outrageous. We've spent months now working on the development of the draft LTP to consult on, um, but fundamentally, you know, I think it does miss the mark. Um, the proposed rates rise is unacceptable, and I think it's untenable. Um, and I think our focus needs to be relentlessly uh, on bringing it back to, to earth. We're obviously going to go out to the public and get their views, and I think that will be critical, but you know, one, one thing that I just want to leave you with on, on this is that you know, you've got inflation sitting at 10, uh, sorry, at 6%, uh, and a Takaha impact of around 3% on rates. So where I sit, I just don't think there is any justification um, for us to be proposing rates increases that are in double digits. Um, there's often talk about these amendments, like what we're going through now, being quite small, um, you know, they're quite little amendments here and there, but the fact of the matter is it's the little things that make up the big things. So I just think we need more, more rigour, more discipline, and, and frankly to be more in touch with uh, the sentiment of the community. But people are doing it really tough out there, uh, and there's a, a whole class of people which are essentially the working poor that have never asked for a handout, uh, have never um, uh, been in a position uh, of on Struggle Street like they are now through absolutely no, no fault of their own. And we need to be leading the charge to change that and be responsive to our community. So I think the one thing that this council could be doing more than anything is to uh, getting the, the rates increases and the finances in order because that, in my view, is the number one focus. So Sam will put up uh, the amendments uh, that, that I'm not supporting, um, but I want to be honest with you around why that is and, and where my focus sits throughout this process. Oh, great. So now, where is going? Okay. So uh, just to clarify what... Oh, 
Oh, sorry, sorry, Aaron. Sorry. Apologies for didn't put my hand up high enough. Um, just before we uh, vote, as we go through the amendments, I just want every single councillor to think about each time we add money to the rates, how much that's going to hurt some people in our city. Um, I didn't like the sound of double-digit rate rises and 15% um, sounds like a big number, but is it really? And uh, there's, a, there's a tool going around that you can use where you can put in your own property value and have a look at your rates increase. And when you see the actual number, if you're not shocked, you're, you're out of touch with reality because the number hurts. And the people that are going to get hurt the most uh, in, in this are the people that are um, asset rich and cash poor. Um, and the ones that will come out the best are the ones that are cash rich and uh, have a low value asset and, uh, and can take a hit of 15%. But there's plenty in this city that actually can't. And uh, you need to think about them. And it's really disappointing to have 120 amendments come up in a year where there's this term bandied around cost of living crisis and the term crisis, emergency, all that stuff, they're pretty, um, they're pretty common terms now, so they don't actually mean a lot, uh, but, which is really sad because for some people that cost of living crisis will mean that they will have to move out of their house if interest rates bump again, which it looks like they might. Uh, there's going to be two more increases in the home interest rate because inflation isn't coming down. But when we're putting up the rates on houses at over double the rate of inflation, we are driving inflation. Every council in this country that puts up rates over the rate of inflation is driving inflation. You're responsible for that hurt that's being put on people. So you need to think about every single amendment. And it's really disappointing that I think there's maybe 10 amendments to reduce the rates. Um, that's just not enough and you can all sit around and think you did a lot of hard work for a year but without finding 120 amendments to reduce rates we didn't actually work that hard at all. Thank you. Okay so just going to walk through how we're going to do uh, these amendments. So just there are a block of amendments which is number 24810 1.1 and 86 that, well, actually, so the first few are just confirming that funding is available on budget and it will progress. So that, so you have confidence that uh, you don't need to add new additional money on budget, that it's there. And then you've got it confirmed in, uh, in writing. One, the 1 1.1 is also just noting that that's confirmed in budget without requiring the substitution that was proposed, so I think, Councillor Moore, you withdrew the substitution, the suggested substitution. You don't need it. It's on budget. Um, the number 86 is one that we will add in the, that block as well because that's the one from Councillor Coker, which is saying we will now do a report and bring it back, time for June. So we're proposing that we can just move those as a block. Is everyone um, clear? Is everyone clear? And then the rest of them we will move through uh, one, one by one, apart from number 58, which is transferred for discussion this afternoon because it's a transport matter. And there's the one that was early withdrawn because it didn't get a seconder, which is Councillor Johansson's one. No, that, no uh, my understanding is Her Councillor Harrison Hunt put it back on again. So he withdrew and it. And that's going in this afternoon. It's going in this afternoon. Yeah. So is that clear? We're, we're clear about which which ones are. So shall I shall I just move through them? So one is the uh, the one about the uh, number one point one is Councillor Harrison Hunt one, which is about the dog park in the southwest. It's confirming that. I'm sorry, Councillor Moore. Oh, more. Clarity. Oh, well, just yes, Mary, that's just, okay. Yeah, just let yeah, Mary would, you, this is the, This is, you're getting that clarity. It's confirmation. It will be passed and seeking. Well, it may be uh, noted as a confirmation. So that's that one. Uh, Councillor, um, the next one is number four, which is, again, confirmation. That's uh, Councillor Croker. The next one is number 10. We can highlight that. Uh, that is around the, that there's 
funding available for the uh, additional green space at Linwood and Wollstone. We, you, uh, you cannot pass a resolution that it will come from de development contributions uh, because th that's actually a required consecration, but as is there and on budget. So you don't need to uh, worry about that one. Number, um, the next one is number 86. 86, so that one has been uh, altered uh, at um, the agreement of the Councillor Coca that that is about requesting a staff report. So these ones have no rate implications. They are already there on budget and in the programme. So are you happy to move though? Two, yes, two as well. Did I not run through that one? Sorry, that was number two as well. That's Two, four, and six. Yeah. yeah. Two. Two, four, six. Uh, I've got an issue. Mm -hmm. On, and, and, that, and that, is that a resolution that we're looking at right there? Yeah. Well, and this one is a bit more comprehensive and it actually notes that, that the budget is set in stone for the FY26 period in comparison to this having no time, time measures, time bound. It just says it's an LTP. So, so can we just leave six off there at the moment? Because I haven't got that on my list and I need to check. So it's 2, 4, 8, 10, 1.1 and 86. Okay. So you want six. You're taking six out of that, yeah. that group. So. Can I just quickly confirm... With 1.1, the substitution is no longer there. It's, yeah, it's, yeah Good. substitution. Yeah. That's that's more that's Thank you. Yeah. So it's on budget without the substitution. Mm. So are people happy to vote on those as a block? Yes. Yeah. So just clarifying, if I can, that there is with these, there is no increase to rates whatsoever. That's right. So just Correct. Thank you. Okay. So with that, I will put all those ones that Mary just said vote. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Against? Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Right. Very good. So now we start, we're going to go with... So um, for the rest of them, we'll go through one by one as the Mayor uh, talks so that we, uh, we'll put it to the vote. We are proposing doing a show of hands uh, and, those, and that, those votes will be recorded for them. Okay, so we'll start off with number three. Mm -hmm. right. You got it, Sam? Okay. Because the top, a lot of them have come out of the top of the sheet. So this, this is the order we're doing it. So now the one we've got here, that I have here, is number three. This is the one from Councillor Coker. All in its show of hands here. All those in favour of that, please raise your hand. Are you, who's doing the counting? Oh, yep. Sorry. Yeah. Good. <laughs> no, 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 I'm reading the wrong one. Sorry. And eight, four, yes, and those against? Okay, thank you. So that is lost. Nice. Righto, the next one is number 11. Uh, Councillor. Yeah, 10's up top. Number 11, <coughs> Councillor Johansson and Bexley Dog Park. All those in favour? So this isn't costing money as well, so. This is. Just so people are aware. Like, the staff advice is that this is not. Yep, got money. it. We got. Yep. So that should have been on one of the. Is that? Can we confirm that that's in budget? Yes. So why don't we just change that resolution to confirm that that one's in budget? That's right. We'll move it up with the others. Is that okay? okay. Everyone happy? We just said it notes that it's done. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Tyler. You can put your hand down mm -hmm. there. Yep. <laughs> so I was reading too. <laughs> right. Sorry. Yeah, we should notice that one. Taking it up. So mm -hmm. we are now up to. 
number 35. Councillor Coke. Okay. All those in favour? Uh, you haven't got it yet, sorry. Sorry, a bit quick. Parks one. Lots. Okay. Everyone happy? All those in favour? It's carried. It's carried. It's ten. Ten. So that's, that is carried. The next one is Councillor Coker number thirty six. Increased coastal and plains pest control. All those in favour? Up. Zero percent. No rates in court. Is that another hand up? Nine. One, two, three. Uh, Councillor Barber, can you keep your hand up if you're voting on this one, please? Sorry. You're voting? Yes. Here. Nine, four. Nine, four. Okay, so that's. It has to be carried, it's not. Yep, yeah, so that's carried. Righto, the next one. Um, you've got a lot in here, yeah. Councillor Coke. <laughs> <laughs> You're busy spending. No, I won't get it. Councillor uh, number 37, um, Councillor Coker, increase the Banks Peninsula and Port Hills Pest Control. All those in favour, hands up. 0%. 0 done. The zero percent it should have been in the first tranche. No, no, but it does require funding. Mm, it requires funding. So it does require funding. Yes, so it does. Okay, so that. Sorry, Sam, what was it? It's eight four. Okay. It does require an alteration to the budget. Hang on, Mary. So this is clearly saying an increase of 150 to 300. So, uh, Russell, can you, uh, I'm expecting it's a rounding error. So. Yep. Okay, let's listen to Russell, please. If I could just clarify. So when we're working out the rates impact, so a capital project is about 1% over two years is about $92 million worth of expenditure and capital. It's about 1% over two years. This is an operation cost. So about $7 million is 1% in rates. This does require funding, but it's very small percentage increase, but it still does require funding. But the impact to put here would be uh, three decimal points. So, so just to be clear, we do need to have a vote on it because we do have to put it in budget, even if it's got a... Minimal so shall I do that one again? All those in favour of number 37, please put raise your hand. <coughs> Nine. 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 Okay, that's carried. The next one is Councillor Barber number 53, funding in the out years for Preston's Marshall Hall Trust. You got All those in favour? So just, uh, this is the sheet that we've been given to go through, and this is where do we go. Yeah. My number's not matching their numbers. No, right. it's okay, we'll share this one. You were doing that one there. Yeah. Okay, so... Number 53. Come on, guys, number 53. Marston's Hall Trust. In favour? Okay. Right. Thank you. Well, it's easy. Yep. Right. South Library, number 54. Our old favourite, Councillor Coker again. <laughs> so you're no longer... Right. All those in favour of number 54. All those against number 54. Oh, that's right. That's lost. Okay, thank you. The Shirley Community Centre, Councillor Cotter, number 56. All those in favour of that? Well, 
What have we got, Sam? We're on 56 on screen. Yep. So, sorry, all those in favour, keep your hands up, please. Okay. Right. Now, we've got this one here, Mary. Yes. Oh, yes, sorry. Uh, just to clarify, number 57, just to note that the mover and I expect the second to have agreed to a change to this. So the change is now uh, up on screen. So, uh, Councillor Templeton, you have agreed to that change, and can we just confirm that, Councillor Croker, that you are happy with that change? Okay, so it's ready to put to the vote. Okay, all those in favour of number 57? Okay. Carried. Thank you. Now, the next one's count, uh, number fifth, uh, 59, Councillor Johansson, Lower Heathcote Plan. All those in favour? Okay. All those against, please. Are you getting, are you getting um, Tim? Yeah. 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 Tim? Okay, that's cool. Thank you. That's lost. Thank you. Right. Um, number 75, Councillor Moore, remove pay to play at Naipunawai. All those for that, please. And against? Okay, that's lost. Okay, the next one is number 80, Councillor Coker, carbon reporting on the capital projects. All those in favour? Come on, oh. just, we'll just wait till it's up on screen. So I know everyone's in favour, so it doesn't... It just, Ready? That's carried. Yep. No. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 Um, and a number 127, Councillor Fields, um, the Voshals Toilets, I think, wasn't it? Our toilet specialist. All those in favour? Okay, that's that's carried. Thank you very much. Okay, so what do we do with these ones again? So uh, those ones are left lying on the table, so we have to go back to these grant ones. So right, okay. On the table. And we don't have to do that. So just ones. to clarify and remind people again, the discussion on the ecosystem, those uh, resolu uh, amendments 31, 32, 130 are left lying on the table. Okay, and so now we're going back to... This one, yes, you want so to we've got uh, twenty nine. We've got some amendments, uh, which twenty nine will be put. If that's lost, we have a, a foreshadowed motion of twenty eight, and then if that's yeah. So number fifty five, I think, is covered with your biodiversity one that's already passed, isn't it? Okay. Great. So we have a main motion, which is number, number 29. 29. Sorry, uh, so everyone it, clear with what we're voting on? And if that one is lost, we then have a foreshadowed a motion that is around increasing the budgets. And if that one is lost, we have another foreshadowed motion, which is increasing just one of those funds. So we're clear about that? So, so if we start off with 29... All those? It, no, that's why they're foreshadowed. So if number 29 is lost... Is that the problem that we don't grants? Yep. Right. That's community grants and funds. So that's all of them. If that is lost, we then move to the foreshadowed one of 28. That increases them. 
and if that is lost, we just move to the next one that's increasing just one. So it's basically save money. If you don't want to save money, go mental. Yeah. And then if, if go mental fails, go partial. So okay. when it comes down to it, if we don't want to save money, we want to spend money. That's really what it comes down to. Okay. But, so, but okay. 55. So we're not going to a, debate a those now. <laughs> we're just going to put both these. And it's the last one before lunch. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So number 29. All those in Kiss favour of number 29. Where are you, Tim? No, it's not. Wait. Sorry. Go hands up again. Sorry. Eight. Nine. Eight. Nine. Eight. Nine. Eight. Yes, got done. Eight. Nine. Is it? Can we just do that one? Yes, one. Because uh, Tim, you were a bit late, so you're putting your hand up. So Tim is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So that is lost. Is that so, right? Uh, Unless there's an abstain. So that means that's a substantive stays on the table, which is what's in the plan. Yeah, so number 28 stays. Uh, no, yeah, the status quo stays, not 28. Yeah, which is approved increases. So we could foreshadow. Do you want to still put forward your one or when we've all... Mel's... These are different. These are different. Okay. Yeah. Mike's on, please. Okay, stop Mike. doing a wee chit chat. Okay, so can we just can we just have a one minute break while I clarify what just, is just actually time. since we've had a time the status quo stays, that I clarify what is the status quo so you know what this is. It, We'll have two minutes. I'll two see minutes. you soon. We have the clarity that we've been looking for. Great. So ju just, uh, just... Quite everybody, please. Just to clarify, sorry, I misunderstood what I heard here. I thought it was eight and eight, but the other one was eight and nine, so it was lost. So now we do go into the foreshadowed uh, emotions, and this is over what is in the plan at the moment. Okay. So, Tim, are you up to this, bud? Yep, good, good on you. So now I'm now putting number 28. Okay, all those in favour of number 28, please put your hand up. Well, uh, eight, four, eight, four. Eight, four. So it's uh, against? I do, don't I? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All those against? Okay. So that is God knows what. <laughs> so we don't go any further now, do we, Mary? On to the next one. We do. That, that's lost. Yeah. So now we move on to, to the foreshadowed one. Okay. So now we're now down on number fifty-five. So all those in favour of that one, please put your hands up. And all those against? Nine. Thank you. Uh, lost. 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 Yep. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you look a bit sorry. lost. <laughs> Great. Okay, Great. so we're now done. For lunch. We are breaking for lunch.
and um, if we just hang around for about two minutes mm -hmm. after we're offline, just for a, a very special elderly, elderly person's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>